Hi everyone, for those of you joining me for part two of the flower pot drawing, um, this is the adding paint section. So in order to move along with this part of the lesson, you will need to make sure that you either have water-based markers or watercolor paint and a paintbrush. Um, otherwise, this lesson is not going to pertain to you and you can just go refer to part one and finish off with color pencil, marker, or crayon. So the supplies that you're gonna need are a cup. I've used reused a pickle jar um, to hold my water. You're going to need at least one paintbrush. Um, multiple sizes are helpful. Um, smaller ones to get into smaller spaces. Um, but one, as long as you have one, that should be enough. And I'm gonna go ahead and place my paintbrushes face down in the water because we are going to need to work with a wet paintbrush. Um, and then before you begin, you wanna test out to make sure if you are using markers, that your markers will in fact work with water. Not all markers will spread using water, especially permanent markers. They absolutely will not um, spread with water. So you can test those out before you begin, and then we're gonna go ahead and try out both methods. So here I have put down a sample of two different markers that I found around my house. Um, one is this art marker that doesn't tell me if it's water-based or not. And then this one is a Tombow marker that says acid free. So we're gonna try this one out as well. Um, and I have the Tombow markers on this side and I'm trying out the art markers here. Um, oh, hoo hoo is what they're called. And then over here, I just did a rent, uh, just a random outline with no markers to show you that when we use water on permanent marker, it shouldn't move, that nothing should happen. So that's why we outline with permanent marker so that when we're blending the colors, nothing happens to our outline. So let's go ahead and try out this first marker that I have. And I'm gonna see if the water does anything and it doesn't, it doesn't move, it doesn't um, blend. So these markers that I have here are no good for this project. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put them away. Um, if I wanted to color with the markers, then I can just use those, but I wouldn't be able to use the paintbrush. Let's check out my Tombow markers and see if they move with the water. And in fact, they do. You can see that the color is starting to blend away and it's becoming a more liquid design. I'm gonna go ahead and blend that color up here with the water. And then you saw how just a small little outline creates now a whole shape. So for me, these markers are gonna do just fine. I also have a set of watercolor paints that I'm going to be using for those of you who have watercolor paint, um, but definitely you need to test out your markers with water and a paintbrush before you begin. All right, so now I have kind of grabbed some of the colors of the markers that I wanna use. I also have my watercolors here. Um, they may look different than the watercolors you have, and that's perfectly fine. Um, I've got my water and my paintbrushes ready to go in the water. So I'm first gonna demonstrate how you can use markers to create a watercolor painting. Now we've already tested. I had one set of markers that doesn't work, and I have these markers that are gonna work for me. So um, what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna decide uh, what color I want to work on the leaves first because they're kind of in the background. So I wanna get those out of the way first. Now, I want you to think about ways that you can blend colors together. So if I think of the color green, there are two colors that make this color. Um, that would be yellow and blue. So yellow and blue are great colors to use alongside of green. So I'm gonna start by placing a line of green 
within some of my leaves. Maybe I'll put some green over here and maybe a line of green over here. If I want my leaves to be um, a little bit more on the blue side, I can take a blue color and place the blue next to the green. And then we're gonna see what happens when we take the water and mix those together. So I'm gonna start up here. I'm gonna take the watercolor and I'm just gonna go back and forth over the blue and the green color. And I should be creating a new color with those two colors put together. So this is just one technique of taking two colors and bringing them together with your water instead of just using one color. So I'll go back and forth with the water. If you have too much water, you'll notice that your color might be too light. So it's important that you um, wipe your brush to make sure that you don't have too much water and not enough color. If that happens, you're just gonna let it dry and you can always add more color after the fact. So now I'm gonna clean my brush because that section is done and I'm going to move on to the next part. So let's say I want to make a darker green on the other side. I'm gonna add some green. This time I'm only gonna use one color. I'm gonna put a little bit of the marker in each spot. Maybe a little over here, some over here. You don't need a lot of marker if your markers are um, water soluble. So now I'm gonna take my brush, wipe off the excess water and begin to spread that marker color around. You'll notice that once you spread the color around, you might have some of the color on your paintbrush. So that will help continue spreading the color from piece to piece. Take more water as you need. Now we are going to move on to some of the flower petals. So for the petals, I suggest you outline each of them. And then um, this is a pink color, which is in the red family. So I can add any of the primary colors because red is a primary color to this and it will work fine. So I can either add red with yellow or I can add a little bit of blue because it does have a purplish tint, but I wanna lighten these petals up. So I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow inside each of these petals to see what happens when I blend those colors together. Take more water, not too much, and let's get blending. All right, so as you can see here, um, if you do not have paint at home, but you do have water soluble markers, using water with them creates a nice soft look um, and is different than what you're generally used to seeing when you're using markers. Now, if you do have watercolor at home, um, I suggest that you go ahead and just use the watercolor. Um, make sure that you are trying to practice using the appropriate amount of water to paint. So that means that you don't want your paint to be too dark. Watercolor paint should be see-through. You should be able to see the paper through it, but you don't wanna to see too much paper. So if you have too much water, then the color is not gonna show up. If you have not enough water, 
and too much paint, the paint is going to be completely dark, completely see, uh, opaque. You can't see the paper and that is too much paint, not enough water. But that's an easy fix and so is this. So for this one that's too much water, you would just add a little bit of paint to it um, and then you can spread that around. If your paint is too thick and you don't have enough water, simply clean your brush, take your paintbrush and spread that extra paint around. Watercolor paint is awesome because just a little bit can be spread a really long way. So I'm gonna finish painting this bottom section up and show you how you can add a shadow in your flower pot to make it look a little more realistic. Play around with mixing colors if you have watercolor. So I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow into my brown to lighten up one of the sides, just to give it a little bit more volume, a little bit more excitement. So one way to add a shadow to the bottom of your flower pot is to simply take the watercolor that you're already using and just do another layer of that color. So that's gonna give you an instant shadow. And what I will suggest if you do this technique is after you put your shadow in, clean your brush, wipe your brush off, and take your brush along the line where the shadow meets your, your flower pot and you're just gonna take the water and go right on that line so the line disappears. It's more of a smooth transition. I'm gonna do the same thing on the top. I'm gonna add a little bit of a shadow on the left side. Too much paint, not enough water. So I'm gonna use some water to spread it out, going slow around the flower petals. Adding in a little bit more yellow on the right side. And then my shadow on the left, I simply put a thick layer, a little bit thicker layer of paint, clean my brush, wipe it so that there is no more paint and not a lot of water. And then I just go over that seam back and forth till the line disappears. You may also want to add a shadow on the lip of underneath the lip of the, the vase or the flower pot. So I'm going to take my brown again underneath here to show that there is a shadow underneath that top portion, clean my brush, wipe as much water off as possible and then go over that line one more time so that the water blends the color into the rest of the pot. So there you have it. Um, you can use whatever type of paint you have at home to decorate your flower pot. Don't be afraid to mix colors together, try some things out, experiment, and have fun.